Well, hey there, Team Healthy. I'm so glad to be with you once again today. And boy, do we have a good program here for you. Um, with me today is Ross Rosenberg. You're the, uh, the director of the Self-Love Recovery Institute. Is that correct? Absolutely. T tell us a little bit about that and, and what it is that you're hoping to accomplish uh, in the work that you do with respect to that. Well, I've been a psychotherapist for 35 years. And um, before I even knew it, I was working with um, and specializing on codependency and narcissistic abuse. And over the time, I um, not only wrote a book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, that helps people understand why codependents fall in love with narcissists, but I also created a treatment program and treatment tools. And that pushed me to build a company that promoted the recovery from codependency, from narcissistic abuse, from gaslighting. And that company is called Self Love Recovery Institute. Okay. And that company represents pretty much all of the contributions that I have on the subjects. Now, you, you actually have written extensively about the term that you simply call the self love deficit disorder. Yes. Uh, which is, uh, it, it overlaps with understanding codependence and all of that. Can you talk with us about what, uh, what you refer to with self-love deficit disorder? Yep. Or shortened SLDD. Um, as a recovering codependent, I always thought the word was stigmatizing um, unfair. It just did not describe anything other than all the bad traits that, that the codependent had. And it bothered me. Plus the, the, the term codependency was created in the 70s and actually doesn't mean what it, the words imply it means. So I, um, about eight years ago, wanted to create a replacement term that represented the problem. And that is self-love deficit disorder, because at the core of every codependent is a very severe self-love deficiency. And if you can, or you or, or any practitioner can find a way to resolve that, neutralize that, you've essentially cured it. And so that's why um, I'm trying my best as one person to change the term and help people use a, a term that not only affirms who they are, but gives them hope for the future. Okay. Now you mentioned that the title of your book is the human magnet syndrome, which just kind of dovetails with what you're saying there. So you're saying that people that have the self love deficit are those who are most uh, likely going to be pulled in by that charming narcissistic individual. Absolutely. How does that tend to work? So yeah, for the purpose of this podcast, we'll go with the term codependency because that's a term I believe you use. But um, codependents and narcissists are perfectly matched. If you think of a dancing couple, you have a leader and a follower. You, um, so the codependent as the giver, the sacrificer, and the narcissist as the needer and the taker, they naturally fit like puzzle pieces. And they only know their, their own perspective on relationships. And because of that, there is a force, a unconscious psychological force that tells a person when they meet one another, which I call chemistry, that this feels right. Therefore, codependence and narc pathological narcissists always come together. And it's, it's at the high 95% because the relationship simply would not work otherwise. So my book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, which I am starting to write the third edition of, explains why codependents who want to stop this habit, want to stop this self-destructive pattern, want to escape narcissistic abuse, fail because they are going against elements of their psyche that are deeply embedded, they're unconscious, that go, they go all the way back to their childhood. And, you know, Ross, one of the most common questions I receive is, uh, do narcissists know they're narcissists? And you sort of answered some of the uh, that question when you said there are so many subconscious forces at work. Yeah. It's like, uh, do I know that I'm speaking English? It's like, well, yeah, it's what I've always done. And I don't even realize I'm speaking English until someone else shows up speaking French. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, now that I, I see it. But uh, so much of what we have going on as we engage with each other is on that subconscious level. Absolutely. And, and that's why it's so important for people like yourself and myself to help educate individuals about what's going on and bring that subconscious up to the conscious level. It's not as easy as educating people to bring the unconscious to the conscious because 
the trauma that is responsible for one's codependency or uh, narcissism is dissociated. So you need a certain type of treatment technique to access okay. that part of the dissociated trauma. And that is what I am trying to teach other practitioners and, and people through my book and YouTube that there's not a cure to this unless you know how to get into the invisible. Yeah, why don't we do a little sequence here? Uh, oh, you okay. mentioned it's it's like a dance. Now, talk to me first about um, what that dance is like from the narcissist angle, and then from that codependence angle. So, uh, what, what is that dance all about? What what's the narcissist like going into a relationship like this? Okay, to to, to answer that question, we have to understand what chemistry is. Chemistry is the gut intuitive feeling that. A relationship feels safe, right? Someone's attractive. And that happens almost unconsciously, even though we think it's conscious. Healthy people feel safe and comfortable with other healthy people. And the human magnet syndrome talks about that. But if you are a person, an SLD, a codependent, and a narcissist, say narcissistic personality disorder, you've had a childhood that was severely traumatizing and a relationship template comes from that. And that template shows you consciously and unconsciously what feels safe. The codependent feels safe when they answer questions. They are passive. They are polite. They are kind. They are giving. The narcissist feels safe when someone is interested in them. Someone laughs at them, gives them attention. So the narcissist's conscious experience is, Wow, she's beautiful. She's interesting. She she's an angel. She listens to me. I can tell her about everything and she gets my pain. And it's this conscious feeling that even healthy people feel like, wow, I hit a jackpot. The codependent has that same feeling like, oh my gosh, he's he's handsome, he's bold, he's assertive, he's exciting. Neither go, wow, I found a narcissist. That's my opposite. <laughs> wow, I found a codependent. Right. So it is what they know and believe feels safe and familiar, and they don't even know it's coming exactly. from childhood. So they just fall in love because it feels exciting. Well, in fact, uh, you, you take the words right out of my mouth. I tell folks all the time, in moments of crisis or decision, we tend to fall back on what's familiar. So when, when you're treating people who are inside this syndrome, uh, what do you, as a therapist, what are you looking for? What do you notice? And what is it that you want to bring to the forefront? So what I did, and, and I, I won't address it because I, I would take up too much time, but what I did with my human magnets in the book is I very specifically defined codependency and then later self-love deficit disorder and, and whittled it down to a very basic definition. And, you know, we can't solve a problem if we don't understand it. And codependency, as you know, is like, 10 pages of, of descriptions and everyone has a different opinion. Well, I created a treatment program. It's called the self-love recovery treatment program. And there are 11 stages to it. And it all works stage by stage to understand, help a person understand what is it that happened to them? Why do they feel hypnotically attracted to someone whom they can't escape? Because my work, and it, and it upsets a lot of people, not my community, it holds the codependent or the SLD, self-love deficient person, responsible because if you play the victim and you keep saying, I, they keep hurting me, there's no solution. My theories say we fall in love with them. We open the doors that invite them. We are afraid. Now, I never excuse abuse, but when you understand it is because of what is for lack of better words, wrong with you, yourself. What I've been carrying on the inside. Right. So with that in mind, I created a treatment program that helps the codependent, the SLD, understand who they are, why they fall in love and stay in love and are afraid to leave, and helps them understand the abuse and the neglect they endured, and starts to overcome each part of the problem, including the part that very few therapists can get to, which is the unconscious or dissociated part. I and mean, I have my own technique where I call the hitch method.
and so those 11 stages move um, a person up towards every element of codependency to, so that is neutralized and healed. And there's not any more reason to not love yourself, to not care for yourself. And that and, is what I call the cure. Well, I was looking at some of your material and one of the things you mentioned is so necessary in this uh, healing process is that you need to identify the tricks, manipulation and coercion. The narcissist will try out on you. Absolutely. Uh, now, Absolutely. So what are we looking at there? Yeah. So in my 11 stages, I have a stage which is called preparing for the narcissistic storm. And so if you're going to like leave a narcissist, the worst thing you can do is not know what they do to keep you in. Okay. And not know what you do to sabotage yourself. Okay. So knowledge I, is power. In other words, knowledge is power, especially most of my work helps people understand what is not directly observable and visible. <laughs> and so I teach them what I, um, to build what I call is predictive awareness. Okay. Before I even suggest someone break up, terminate, divorce a narcissist, they must know every inch of their own codependency and their partner's narcissism so that they can outmaneuver them. It's like a chess game. Okay. And they've always been overcome and overwhelmed because a narcissist has more power and control over them. So I developed um, a whole bunch of techniques and methods to help the SLD, the codependent, to not get caught into the traps that they learned as a child out of survival and, and then practiced in all their other relationships. You mentioned that we need to know what the narcissist manipulations are, but then you also say that you need to know what your own triggers are, and which is what you're referring to, and how you normally react to a situation. So in other words, what you're saying is, but before we can do anything, we've got to uh, have a, a sense of wisdom about you know who I am going into the equation and who I'm dealing with exactly. as I'm going there. And, and only then uh, are we going to be able to uh, make the adjustments that are going to be necessary. Exactly. And, and just one of many examples is the concept of codependency addiction. Being a therapist for 35 years and who I've been an addiction specialist, I've come to understand that codependents, if they break up, leave the, the narcissist, they, they go through a withdrawal syndrome. The withdrawal syndrome is connected to pathological loneliness that is so painful and so magnetizing. It almost always like the heroin to the heroin addict, the alcohol to the alcoholic, it pulls them back. Not that I want to talk about that, but that is one of many topics that are discussed because you can't just say, leave this nasty narcissist. He's such a, you know, a jerk and blah, blah, blah. Because you can leave them, but if you don't understand the forces that are inside of you, that'll pull you back, then you, you end up going back and you feel worse. So, so yes, I do try to create um, a foundation of understanding and techniques that enable a person to successfully terminate a relationship and feel better about it. That's, that's so good. And, uh, you know, we're, we're down on time here today, Ross, and it goes so quickly. You, you're a, a, a treasure trove of information and ideas and all like that. And, and uh, I imagine that the people that have worked with you have benefited greatly. So I, I'm so pleased to have you here and uh, and, you know, I want to commend people to your work on YouTube and your writings you. and all of that. So uh, you and I were talking uh, before we went on uh, with our I think We're both we consider ourselves fellow sojourners. Uh, I don't think any of us can, uh, can, can, uh, can claim that we've got everything figured out. We're doing everything perfectly. What we can claim is we're on the journey. Absolutely. And you know what? I, I, I apologize. I meant to start the, this uh, this uh this event by saying, I am a huge fan of your work. There are not many people who are pure clinicians that have a heart that are emotionally connected and actually are incredible teachers. So keep doing your good work. Also. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. You know, uh, you got to love what you do. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's uh, chase a little rabbit. People would ask me, uh, <laughs> You know, hey, Les, how do you sit there in your counseling office and listen to problems day after day and maintain your sanity? Of course, my first response is, well, who says I'm sane? Uh, <laughs> when, when people ask that question, and I know you understand what I'm saying, they, they don't quite understand what they're asking because I don't consider entering into another person's place of, 
emotional duress to be problematic. No, now, it's like it's like we're doing something great. What an honor. Yeah, it's like it's like it's, you know, a surgeon does not think of blood and guts. He's thinking about saving someone's life. What, and yes, of course. Of course. Uh, <laughs> so so that, that's where we're gonna go with that. And uh I, I hope that our little two word uh, uh, thought here is going to be something that triggers a lot more based on what, what you're saying. Absolutely. And uh, Ross, we're just going to have to pick up and do some more of this. Okay. Sounds good. All right. to me. Hey, thanks so much for what you do and team healthy. Uh, thank you for being here with me. And uh, I'm looking forward to our next time that we are, we're able to get together. Bye. Bye-bye. Bless. Bye-bye. Bless.